Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakak Radash. Yahweh being the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Hada, Sham, name, Yahweh Shai, being the name of only begotten Son, meaning He deliver, He saves, Rakak Radash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, I'll just read most of them well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. We're back at it when the list through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Lord willing, view is edifying. Ezekiel 3, starting at verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him now warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Okay? So, the reason why I wanted to start off with this precept through the spirit, because a lot of these false prophets out there, man, all right? These men who know that they're Israelites, okay? Who know they're of the circumcision, so to speak. And they're not leading or warning their congregation from the judgment that Yahweh shall try to come, man. They're not preparing their congregation for the day of the Lord. All right. Yeah. You tell your, your congregation that they're Israelites, which is a good thing, but you know, it's more to it than just being an Israelite, man. Okay. That's surface level. All right. What, you know, because you got two thirds, two thirds are comprised of Israelites. Okay. But are they going to make it to salvation the first time around? No. All right. So it's deeper than just knowing you're an Israelite, man. Okay, you have to know the prophecies too, man. You have to warn your congregation about the prophecies. The scripture say Revelation 19 and 10. Let's get that real quick. It says, and I fell and fell at his feet to worship him. He said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the most high for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, man. So the spirit of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? And a lot of you false leaders out there, you're not coming in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. That's why you're not. That's why you're not truly coming in the spirit of prophecy, man. You're not warning your congregation about the evils to come. A lot of you are not warning your congregation about Jacob's trouble. Okay, a time when all hell is going to break loose, a time of trouble the world has never seen before. Okay, a lot of you are not warning your congregation about the uh, the MOTB, the mark of the beast. Okay, you know I had we had uh, and this is what sparked my spirit to do this lesson. We had. <clears throat> We had this Jake come up to the camp, okay? He said he knew he was Israel, um, but he used to follow uh, IUIC, and he used to always, he used to use, uh, follow um, ISUPK, okay? Which, you know, are two Israelite groups that, uh, you know, not really are, are in good standing, man, okay, when it comes to the doctrine, all right? And um, he said he used to follow those groups for a couple years, you know, but he didn't even, but the brother asked him about the MOTB, about Revelation 13 to 16, and he didn't even know what that was, man, okay, and now, you know, not to knock the brother, okay, even though he should know that, okay, because that's a very detrimental prophecy, but at the same time, how can you really blame him, because he's as a sheep with no shepherd, man, let me get that real quick, Lord willing. This is uh, Zechariah 11 and 5. It says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them, pity them not, man. All right? And that's what it is. You know, these camps, they're supposed to be set up as shepherds, but they don't have pity upon our people, man, because they're not truly warning our people from the Lord's judgment, man. All right? Let me see if I get another one like that real quick. Jeremiah 15 and 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. 
They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place, man. And their resting place ultimately is Yahweh Bashmashai and his truth. Okay, his full doctrine of truth. You see? But these false these false prophets out here, man, they're leading the Lord's sheep. They're scattering Yahweh Bashmashai's sheep abroad, man. That's why the Lord said, He that gathereth not with me doth what? Let's get the precept. So like you. Seem like Jake don't know how to spell today. <laughs> All right, he says, um, Matthew 12 and verse 30, he says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad, man. And there's a hefty fine, okay, that there's a hefty price that has to be paid when you're against Yahweh Shai, especially when you know the Lord's will, man. And that's the thing with a lot of these false prophets out here, man. They know Yahweh Shai's will, but they're just teaching according to it for filthy lucre's sake, man. Okay, they wanted to sell out, get a 501c3, you know, get paid off by the government, you know. That's why they're not teaching you certain things within the doctrine. Because in the 501c3 contract, you're not allowed to teach certain things, man. Okay, you're not allowed to teach certain things. You have to accept certain things. Like, for instance, you know, you're claiming to be Israel, all right. And uh, if a sodomite wanted to come up in their congregation... They would have to accept the sodomite, man, according to the law of the land, Esau's laws. All right. And it's not like Sodom's going to repent. You know, it's one thing if he's coming in the congregation to repent, but it's not like he's coming in to repent. It's, he's he's coming in wanting to be Sodom, but, you know, still can come amongst their congregation, man. He's still being Sodom. All right. And that's the problem with these false prophets, man. All right. They sold out for filthy lucrative sake, man. Okay, they're scattering Yahweh Shai's sheep. Let me see if I get this real quick. This is um, Micah 3 and 11. It says, the heads thereof judge for reward. Okay, that's what you see. They judge for reward, man. They sold out for that bag. All right, it says, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? And that's what they think, man. They really think that the Lord is dealing with them, man. Okay, it says, none evil can come upon us, man. But they're going to see the evil and the judgment of Yahweh Shemashai come upon them shortly, man. Okay, because Yahweh Shemashai is not playing with these different false leaders because they have a lot of blood on their hands, man. And they're not teaching their people about the sure word of prophecy. Second Peter 1, starting at verse 19, it says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, meaning that it's going to come to pass, man. All right. It, you know, you can guarantee that this will come to pass. It's a sure word. Okay. You can put your money on it, you know. And it says, uh, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Okay, right. It'll behoove you to take heed to the prophecies, man. All right. And it says, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, man. You see, but these false leaders, instead of taking heed to the prophecies, they'll try to discredit them, you know, because they love it in Babylon. They don't want to leave Babylon, man. Okay. They don't want to leave Babylon and they're not all, and they're also not preparing their congregation, which will lead to blood being on their hands, man. The scriptures speak about how you're not supposed to set a stumbling block before the blind. Okay. So our people are spiritually blind until the Habash Mashiach puts the spirit on them to see via the teachings, you know, like so say they lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears and be converted and be healed. All right. But the thing is, they're furthering the blindness of our people when they teach them the wrong ways, man. OK, let me get this precept. This is Isaiah 56 and verse 10. And it says. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. You know, they want to make merchandise out of everything, you know. They got, they got the, uh, they sell you the t-shirts. They sell you the, the garments. You know, they sell you, uh. They sell you all the little merchandise they can sell you, man. Sell you breakdowns if they can. You know, they try to make money out of everything Jake do. You know? But don't get me wrong. Can you sell 
garments and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? As a profession, yeah, you could do that, but it's the spirit that they come in. You know, they 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 more so look at it as like, yeah, we can make money off of this instead of yes, we can provide this for the flock. You know, they 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 more so have a greedy mindset. Okay. And when it says, which can never have enough. So they coming really in the spirit of Esau, man. That's why it's going to say, woe unto a lot of our people. It says, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, man. You know, and ran greedily after the error, error of Balaam, man. That's what you see with a lot of these dudes, man. They sold out. They took that bag. That's why they're not teaching the full doctrine. Because a lot of these pastors, even, in the, in, even outside of Israel, a lot of these pastors and a lot of uh, false prophets in Israel, you know, they know the truth, man. Okay. Or at least they've heard it, but the spirit is hardened in their heart. Now it says, um, yeah, they are greedy, greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Okay, right there. But and that's not the spirit of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. And, and that's the thing. When you come to this truth, Philippians 2, starting at a. Uh, Verse 2, it says, Fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And you see that amongst these camps. They don't have that type of spirit, man. Okay? It says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So you're supposed to be worried about promoting the flock over yourself, man. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so Yahweh Shai had that mindset. But a lot of these guys, they don't follow Yahweh Shai. Because a lot of these guys are Yahweh Shai's enemies, man. They're enemies to the cross. Okay, and, and, and one of the ways that they're Yahweh Shai's enemies is that they're scattering his sheep. You know, by way of their false doctrines, man. Let me see if I get this one real quick, Lord willing. This is, uh... Titus chapter 1 verse 10 it says for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision meaning what especially those who know that they're Israelites man you got many vain and unruly talkers man in Israel who know that they're Hebrew Israelites man you see that's why Yahweh said beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they be of the most high man all right, for there are many false prophets gone out into the world, verse 11, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, man. Yeah, selling out for that 501c3, teaching doctrines which they ought not, man. Okay, for filthy lucre's sake, for money, man. Federal Reserve notes, man. Okay, and that's why they're going to perish with that money because that money is not going to be able to save you from the times of trouble that they're not warning their congregation about man all right let's see if i get that uh, word subvert lord willing all right greedy dogs man greedy dogs Okay, it says subvert in the Greek. Strong's G three ninety six, anatrepto, anatrepto. It says to overthrow, overturn, destroy, to subvert. Okay, to overturn, figuratively overthrow, subvert, man, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're overthrowing and subverting people's faith, man. You know, people's uh, uh, salvation ultimately. You know. Because they're teaching them the wrong ways, man. Okay? And when you teach the flock the wrong ways and they practice it, then guess what? That's blood on your hands. So you're not only subverting the flock, but you're also subverting yourself, man. Okay? And you're not preparing your congregation. And Yahweh Bashmashai will make you pay for that unless you repent, man. All right? Because the Lord set you up to be leaders. And, you know, like it says in Michael 3, starting at verse 1, and I said, here I pray you, O heads of Jacob and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Yeah, okay? You're supposed to be knowing judgment. You're supposed to be knowing the right ways of the Lord, how to lead about a congregation in righteousness, okay? You've been set up as leaders. You've been set up as heads over the people. 
verse 2 it says who hate the good and love the evil and that's what they do man they hate the righteousness of Yahweh Shemashiach and they love wickedness man who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones and that's what they do for the flock here it is the Lord says we were as dry bones in Ezekiel 37 and now through this truth he's putting uh, sinews upon us he's putting breath upon us okay he's covering us back up he's pretty much building us back you know from being dry bones but these false prophets out here with their false doctrine and how they lead about their congregation it's like they're plucking off the body parts off of off of Israel man and making them dry bones again man taking away that that spirit from them you know it says uh verse three uh, so I can read to it again Who hate the good and love the evil Who pluck off their skin from off them And their flesh from off their bones Who also eat the flesh of my people And flay their skin It says From off them And they break their bones And chop them in pieces As for the pot and flesh Within the cauldron man Alright You see that's what they do, man. They make merchandise out of Israel, man. All right, they they devour the Lord's inheritance, man. And they're doing and they're starting they're doing it spiritually because when a lot of these a lot of these uh, bodies start dropping, a lot of these prophecies start to be fulfilled, a lot all hell starts to break loose. A lot of these uh a lot of their members in their congregation are gonna start asking them, you know, what's what's this that and the third? How come you didn't tell me about this or why did you say that this wasn't this and now it is? What are you talking about, right? And you know, a lot of the congregation gonna want to put a foot up their ass in that day, man. Okay, you know because that's hey, a lot of people gonna be dropping dead, man, and they're gonna be wondering, they're gonna be thinking, man, I, I thought I was doing the right thing, I thought I was praising, you know, the Lord, you know, but really they weren't, man. Okay, because they've been led about the wrong way, they've been being led astray, man. And you gotta understand that the blind lead the blind. Both shall fall into a ditch, as the scriptures say. So if you're following after these false prophets wholeheartedly, you know, you don't come back to the true way, you're going to receive with that judgment too, man. Okay? Uh, Ezekiel 14, starting at verse 9, it says, And if the prophet be deceived when you have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out mine hand upon him, and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, man. Okay? So that's the point. So you seek unto that false prophet, you're going to receive that same punishment. All right? And then and these false prophets out here, they don't teach you about the evil times to come, man. They're not teaching you about how all hell is getting ready to break loose. This is Jeremiah 14 and... Uh, Verse 13, it says, Then said I, our Lord, power, behold, the prophet say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you a sure peace in this place. And that's what they do, man. Okay? Verse 14, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I send them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, I sent the, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and fam by sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Okay, so right, so the same ones who's following them are going to die with them, man. Okay, this is because of the famine and the sword, and that's getting ready to happen at a major scale. Famine and the sword, man. It's going to be a famine out here, a famine of the word, but also a famine of bread, man. Okay? And the sword. Martial law is getting ready to be declared. Jacob Trouble is getting ready to go. All hell is getting ready to break loose. It's going to be complete anarchy in these streets, man. It's going to look like the purge out here, man. Times a thousand. Okay? So, you know, how do you prepare yourself for that, man? Okay? How do you prepare, uh, prepare yourself for that? You got to follow the truth of Yahweh Shemashai and take heed to the ways of righteousness, okay? And abstain from these different wicked congregations, man, and their teachings, because that will lead you, to, lead you to death. It says, um, 
by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them, man. So Yahweh Shemesh is not playing. The Heavenly Father ain't playing, man. Okay? And that's the problem with you false prophets. You're not leading your congregation about. How is it that the brothers say he's been in the truth for X amount of years, following IUIC, following IECPK, and he didn't even know what the mark of the beast was? Okay? Now, can you blame it solely on, 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 on those congregations for him not knowing? Not necessarily. But at the same time, you know, when you follow a real group like Great Millstone, okay, you know, those are one of the first things you learn, man. All right? Because the spirit of Yahweh Shai is amongst Great Millstone, man. And that's why you see that spirit of prophecy so prevalent. This is Ezekiel uh, 13. Actually, let me start at verse 1. Ezekiel 13 and 1. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord power. Woe, woe meaning destruction, sorrow, distress. Okay? So woe, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing, man. Yeah. Okay, for you to say something like, there's not going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, even though he renounced that and ended up, you know, saying there will be a Jacob's trouble. But at first you had him saying there wasn't going to be, man. And you got a lot of these false prophets out there who know they're Israel, but they still don't believe in that tribulation time coming, man. Okay. And it says, uh, it says, oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Okay. Yeah. Slick, man. All right. Slick and conniving. All right. If somebody calls you a fox, that means you're like a slick person, you know? And that's what these false prophets are, man. They're slick. And they're, and they're thieves, okay? Just like the scribes and Pharisees were. You know, slick and wise to do evil. Now it says, Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord, man. Yeah. Gone into the gaps. They're not going out into the highways and byways. A lot of these false leaders out here don't go out and teach anymore. Here it is, our apostles, up in age, been teaching this truth for decades now. And they're still out there being on fire, going out, hitting the streets, man, week in and week out, setting an example for the believers, man. Okay, while well, you got a lot of these other dudes who grew, who came up amongst our apostles, and they don't hit the highways and byways anymore, man. Hey, the scripture say you know a man by his fruits. Okay? And that's what it is. They haven't made up the hedge. They haven't made it for the house of Israel to stand in the day of the Lord. They're not preparing their congregation for these evil times to come. Okay? Because the day of Yahweh the day of the Lord, is going to be a time of war. Jacob's trouble, on which is approaching, is going to be a time of war, man. All right? The scriptures say, uh, all my people make you ready to thy battle. Let me get that real quick. Second Ezra 16 and 40. It says, oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle. Talking about the times of Jacob's trouble. And in those evils, meaning those bad times, be even as pilgrims upon the earth, man. So we're going to be like pilgrims, man. Okay? You know? And just like pilgrims, pilgrims are, are strangers and foreigners. They're nomadic. And that's what it's going to be like in Jacob's trouble, man. Okay? We're going to be on the move. Because all hell is going to be breaking loose, man. It's not going to be as comfortable as it used to this uh, Babylonian lifestyle, man. But this is what we have to go through in order to receive the kingdom. You know, so the Wadi Abashmashai, but they're not warning their congregation about these times, man. Okay? No, warning their congregation about this. They're not making them ready to the battle of the day of the Lord. And that's why a lot of blood is going to be on their hands, man. So, you know, I just wanted to touch on that through the spirit, man. You false leaders, you have not prepped your congregation, man. Okay? And you will pay for that. And those who follow them, if you don't repent and get out of that madness, you're going to die with your false leader as well, man. All right. Thus saith the Lord. All right. Yeah. Y'all about some sure about this video was edifying. Okay. Lord willing, this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about some shy about some double honors to the apostle, all this great most that were well, peace and blessing to you like the Israel. Shalom and about